Hello everyone, it's Mon and welcome back to my little space online. Happy 2024 by the way, I hope you're all doing well. It's great to have you here. I really hope that 2024 will be a great year for film. So far, I am quite optimistic because besides the film price hikes, 2023 has actually seen quite a few cool things for film photography. And I hope that that's just the trend that we're gonna have going forward. Case in point, new film stocks. Earlier last year, Lomography released Lomochrome Color 92, Orwo's NC500, and of course, Ilford, I mean Harman, released the Harman Phoenix 200, which is what I'd want to talk about in this video. So what is Harman Phoenix 200? Well, it's a new color negative film developed from scratch by Harman at their Moberly site in the UK. If you're unfamiliar with Harman, you might recognize some of their black and white film offerings under the Ilford brand. Now, since this is their first time making a color film, they specifically said that Phoenix 200 is experimental and limited. Basically, don't think of this as something like Kodak's professional line, like Kodak Portra 400. This is something more along the lines of Lomography's Lomochrome offerings. Like, this is a character film. Harman says that this is a work in progress emulsion and that it will be improved and refined over time. Anyways, last year, some staff from Harman came over here to Toronto, Canada to have a community event for the release of this film. I attended the event with the Toronto Analog Friends group, which was fun. Uh, I mean, you gotta appreciate it when companies like Ilford Harman do these community engagement things, because it's a great sign that they value the film community and that they are committed to hearing our thoughts about their products. And thoughts about their products do I have. So far, I've shot three rolls of Phoenix 200. The first one I shot at box speed. If you don't know what box speed means, it's the intended ISO of the film as written on its box. So in this case, 200 ISO. The two others I overexposed at 100 ISO, so one stop. Which I'm glad I did because look at this comparison shot. For the cameras, I used my new favorite point and shoot, the Fujifilm Class S, and my Leica M6. Shout out to Grey Nation and Downtown Cameras here in Toronto for developing and scanning my film. They're great. As you can see from these images, this film exhibits high contrast, high saturation, and visibly strong grain. The warm tones are very pleasant, which means that skin tones render quite nicely on this film. It seems to handle flash quite well too. While I was out taking some of these photos, I also took the same shots on a second camera with Kodak Ultramax 400 that I shot at 200. I know I should have probably compared it to something like Kodak Gold or Color Plus because those are both 200 ISO films like Phoenix, but I already had Ultramax loaded on my other camera and I swear I thought it was Color Plus. Anyways, this is the comparison y'all are gonna get. <laughs> To be fair, I find that Ultramax tend to render more neutral, so as you can see, Phoenix seems to render more warm. The greens are minty cool and the blues tend to lean a bit teal, which you can counter in post by adding some magenta tones into the white balance. The shadows have a teal tint to it as well and can get rather murky really quick because this film doesn't seem to have a lot of latitude. 
It's giving less than four inches. <laughs> no. So I will probably never shoot this film at box speed again, unless it's really bright outside, because you'll quickly blow up your highlights. And did I mention that this film blooms like hellations on God? Some people say that they don't like this character of the film, and perhaps they're right because it can get a bit too much sometimes, but I do think that this can be something that you can leverage in your photos. Like this backlit photo is probably my favorite shot that I took with this film, and I think it wouldn't be as good without the halation. Here's the same store window shot on Kodak Ultramax 400. Different lighting conditions, I know, but you get the point. Another quirk with this film is how it renders fluorescent lighting. It appears to be quite green on this film, so watch out when you're shooting indoors, which again, could be a look. Like maybe if you want to shoot liminal spaces or something haunting like a hospital. I don't know. By now I think you'll notice that rather than seeing flaws, I see opportunities. I'm not being paid by Harman to say that everything is fine with this film in this video by the way, because it's not. I'd really want for this film to improve, but I also want it to remain unique, you know? Like, I don't need another Kodak Portra. You don't need another Kodak Gold. Those film stocks are there for us to buy if we want to get those particular film's characteristics. Although I wouldn't be opposed for a film company to mimic the look of an extinct film like Kodachrome, Agfa Color, and more recently, Fuji Pro 400H maybe. So while I think that Phoenix 200 really needs to improve its dynamic range to fix its muddy shadows and better handle over or under exposure, maybe Harman can keep the way it handles colors, maybe? Or perhaps the halation can stay? Like it doesn't have to be as strong as it is, but I'd welcome a bit of blooming here and there. But that's just me, Harman if you're listening. As it is right now, this film wouldn't be an everyday type of film for me, but I will for sure keep a few rolls of it in my fridge come the time when I come up with an idea that would benefit from this film's unique characteristics. Also, I'm kind of a hoarder. But yeah, go buy this film. Harman says that they will use the proceeds to make better versions in the future. So yeah, I hope you liked this video, and I'll see you all again in the next one. Cheers!